Hello, welcome to the farm. We are done with wagon rides, uh, visits with Santa, all that added on stuff that we did last year, we're done. And we actually lost the last two days. It was pouring, terrible weather here in New Jersey, but kind of drizzling the last day, so people did come out. But this is something we do every year. Um, and you know, some people don't even know what these are. These are grave blankets. Um, when, when you see the sign, grave blankets on the side of the road, it's not a wool blanket that you would use to cover the grave. This is a blanket. It's used to, uh, if you have a headstone or any type of marker, you don't even have to have a marker, this would go over where your deceased loved one is buried. It's just a way to remember them. And this is an order a lady stopped by yesterday. She wants five grave blankets. We also have not that we want to save the family for last, we know they are the best, but our family, some of our family grave blankets here that we were working on. Just, um, and this is the greenhouse that we originally uh, covered this, what, in the spring, then we had... When Jesse Ridgeway was here. Yeah, um, we had bedding plants in here, then we switched it over for some fall stuff, and this is the end result. This side looks a mess, and then this is our side we were doing crafts on, but now we were doing... Um, make your own reefs and centerpieces. But here's some family grave blankets. Uh, put this together for grandma and grandpa that actually bought, originally bought the farm. Uh, just a cross, an angel, and you know, thinking of grandma with some poinsettias and grandpa would have uh, enjoyed the deer on the side. And just, you, know, you think of family. And I don't know if you ever thought about if you've ever seen the greens, but each top kind of has a cross so it's also a nice way that you remember your loved ones this is for my mother-in-law Mike's mom who passed away and then uh, Colleen and I made this is just a separate little thing for Kyle to put on there for her just to remember her so we're gonna get to all the family cemeteries and they're all different places too so uh, and this is my stepfather Anita and I were blessed to have two dads growing up uh, these are some pine cones that Charlie collected and Charlie was actually named after his pop, you know, grandpa. So thought that was pretty cool. Some old bows that my mother had. So it's kind of like us being there with them. Yeah, you know, we know they're not there, but it's a good way to remember them. And, uh, he would certainly be singing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So poor grandma got run over by a reindeer. Yeah, probably more grandma got run over by a reindeer. But the temperature today is, I think my vehicle said it was in the 20s, but it feels much colder. And I am starting to sweat right now. I got my t-shirt on with a shirt underneath. Anita's in a t-shirt. So just being under this plastic in the sun really heats things up. Are we sure how to make that one? Yeah, Anita's been, you know what, I'll take it over. Let me put my little, I'm just decorating the last of that ladies. Well, just some for out front. Huh? Just some for out front. Well, I made one for out front, and then this is the second one. Should I make one more? A big one or another? Probably a half or small. Like a this size, or then the, the ten dollar one is this. Yeah, ten dollars. All right. This is the one. So some people use um, wood and chicken wire to make grave blankets, but it, it makes them really heavy, which is, I guess, nice so that they don't blow away at the cemetery, but. It makes it really hard for you to carry them too. So I learned from a floral shop how to make grave blankets and we used a sheet of styrofoam. So that's what I use. So I take the styrofoam. And I score out my sizes. The one I'm making today is a quarter sheet. I have to cut it in quarters. So this is 36 inches, so I just made a score at 18 inches, and I'll make a score at 9. And you just have to do a nice heavy score, like push the knife down a little bit and go across. And if you did it right, you should be able to break it like this. Break it right up. So depending on the size that you're buying from us. We do. This is a, a half sheet, this is a quarter sheet, and then we actually cut these in half and do a little guy too. Um, some people, 
especially if they their loved one's been cremated they like them just a small one because usually there's a smaller plaque for that so then i take the the styrofoam and i grab some branches from out uh, that we've trimmed around the farm what do we have it we have three different types of yeah things that is, we brought in this is some um pine this is white pine this is hemlock I'm not sure what this one is but we trimmed all these big branches off of the trees around the farm and then we'll cut them down <laughs> so we we cut we cut these branches the trees around the farm i also have a friend who has a um christmas tree farm and i go over there and they cut branches off for us too um so that all of our supplies is local all local groom so then i one thing you need is um a nice pair of, of cutters i like this one um we have a couple different kinds around we have these kind Whatever you have, don't go buy anything. Like, use what you got. But these are my favorite because they don't fall off your hand as I'm dropping them. So then you just pick, look at your branch, and then take off, like Nancy was showing you earlier, the little cross pieces. Just take those off and, and do a nice long piece. So now we have this, this piece, and you just push it right down into the styrofoam, get a good spot, and just push it in. Sometimes it's a little tough. You just keep working your way around with all the pieces that you cut. Just covering up all the styrofoam. It's nice to, in the middle, to have a nice long straight piece that is kind of pretty. Like this is a little fuller. So if you have one that has like a little less pine on it, then, then you can just hide that on the underneath. So nothing gets wasted though. And just continue around until you filled it all in. Want me to work on this and we'll come back? Yeah. Now show them your hands. What about my hands? The sappy hands? Yes. All this is tree sap that comes out when I cut it. I've been doing the decorating, so I have clean hands. Yeah, she's got girl hey, hands. I, nice. guess. I love having clean hands for once. Yeah, usually I have the cleaner hands because I do most of the farm paper. So this year making grave blankets, it worked out. Yeah, I made a few, but Anita stood there and made them and just sent them over this way and I decorated them. Um, e real easy thing to do, you just got some scissors, take some wire, cut little pieces, and basically any ornament that can be out in the weather. Of course, you wouldn't be able to do anything paper, and sometimes even this glitter may come off, but um, we just, like, I don't know who these are for. People are just going to stop at the stand and make them or buy them. Buy them. And, you know, a lot of times people do share or we ask who they're for because it's, it's pretty to have a meaning behind it. Like last year we made one for a baby that had just passed away. So that was something. And like I made one for a friend. We're making for grandparents and all people, you know, that were in our lives that we lost and just a great way to remember them. So I'm just going to show you how to make a reef now. So that's exciting. Do you want to feed the goats first? Oh, yeah. Here, you take the camera. Here, you can, since your hands are already dirty. Like we said, we try to have no loss here at the farm, and uh, we're going to show you what we do with all the extra greens. These are pieces that we've already cut everything off of. Well, th these actually are pretty hardy. Usually they don't have this much left on them, but it's getting to the end. Christmas is this Yeah, we So what I'll do to make a wreath is I'll take and cut all those little crosses that we were telling you about, cut them off, and they're what I'm going to use to make the wreath. Then what's left is all this. So we'll take this, and we know some guys who like to eat this. Let's go out and see our buddies, see what they've been up to. Now we're also freezing temperatures in the morning. Uh, overnight it freezes, so I come out in the morning and give them fresh water. But this is something they really enjoy. <laughs> and you can see they have some pumpkins in here. I think that's the very end of our pumpkins. And they will eat 
them right down to there'll be a stick left when they're done so usually in the morning we'll come in you can see all the sticks are up from yesterday we'll come and we'll pick up just the sticks that they leave in there so they really enjoy them and with having animals outside you know like the water freezes the pigs they're pretty good um, you can either have a heater in their water which we don't this year because of their location so I like to come out and check on them every day and the boys do too so Anita we just check on them and uh, give them fresh water every day so they're getting an extra snack here Frankie hey Frankie all right guys enjoy your brunch oh Anita's bringing them more So what we did, I think we already showed you guys through the nativity, we made this area smaller. So we're getting these sheep, you know, they, they're kind of forced to be close to us. So uh, maybe they'll be friendly, you know, by spring when they're, when we're definitely going to shear them in the spring. So making a wreath. This is a wreath form. Uh, you can get it usually at any craft store. This one came from a really sweet little crafty place called Foster's in Glassboro. If you live in this area, check Foster's out, Delcy Drive in Glassboro. And a paddle of wire. Just take your wire and take one of the cross parts here and go around with the wire. I like to tie a knot in the wire, which is a little bit tough to do because it's wire and then pull it really tight that way you kind of know it's really going to hold on there so then I twist it around make it nice and tight like this so then we take all these pieces that we were showing you that we took off of the pieces that weren't good for the gray blankets these are the ones we rescued from feeding to the goats and you make little bundles like this you want to have all good tops. If you have something that has um, a torn top, let me find one. If you have something that has a torn top, sometimes it doesn't look nice sticking out. You want ones that are finished tops. And you take where your wire was, you lay it down, and I like to squish it together a little bit, and then you wrap around. I wrap around twice just because I like to make sure it's not going to fall apart. Then you do it again. Another bundle. And you can go outside any tree you have in the yard. If you're young, ask your parent. If you don't own the property, ask somebody before you go trimming the bush out there. <laughs> but uh, you could just go cut any kind of green, evergreen down and do it. The only thing is you want to hang this on your outside door. You don't want to put this on the inside of your house because the needles will fall off because your Christmas tree when you put that up you water it constantly there's no way to water this so if you put this on the an inside door the needles will fall off like they kind of fall off your Christmas tree but way worse and you just keep going continuing all the way around this wreath you just stop and then I can finish it Try to make them even. So I kept on working and uh, I made Nancy put the camera down and make me a bunch of these little bunches so that we could just keep going. So I'm almost to the end, so Nancy grab the camera again so that I can show you how to finish it. Just really make sure you pull nice and tight each time so that your wreath doesn't fall apart. That's all you want, especially if you give it as a gift, you don't want it, you know, falling in the person's front doorstep and then tracking it through their house. All these little pine needles are a pain in the butt to clean up. I know every year we got our tree and about June we're still getting pine needles out of the carpet. So as we're getting to the end, you have to make sure, because these pieces are laying down, you don't want to go on top of them. 
you want to pick up the, the, the previous row and then put it down. Same thing, go around twice, pull tight. You want to fix it as you put it in. You don't want to just dump it in there. You want to make sure it looks nice. Now it's going to get a little tougher because you have to pick each one up, slide each one in. Each little bundle just slides under. Did you make it with the amount of bundles? Yeah, actually I think we're going to have one left. In there, I think this is going to be the last one. Again, make sure you don't have it underneath. All right, and now when it looks nice, flip it over. Cut your wire. And then the piece that, not the wire that you're using, but the wire that makes up the frame, go around the frame one time, and then I like to go back under like you're tying a knot, and then catch it. I mean, you could do this with your finger if you're strong enough, but I'm not, and pull tight, and then do that again. That'll just keep your, um, your wire from coming undone. So now you just do it again. And wrap it around so you can't see it. Can you see it? No. Nope. Okay, didn't. good. So I'll flip it back around and you're saying, oh, but that side's like a little bit like indented. We could have put more in there. You could put a little more if you want. I like to leave it indented because then that's where you put the bow. Oh, it needs a little bit of wire on it. Whoa, it's like a slinky. So this is some wire we have here at the farm. Nancy said, do I need to go buy wire? And I said, I, Pop said he has some. He bought it at an auction. Mm -hmm. Two milk crates full of this kind of wire. Oh yeah, we have wire. So we have wire. I wonder how old it is. That yeah. old, oh wow, it's really heavy. Yeah, it's a huge amount of wire. That's spool. That's like solid wood. I was wondering why your response was, we have wire. That's all. I'm like, whoa. I just twist it around a couple times. And then go hang it on your door. Does it look nice? It does. So, friends, we have this much left. So... Maybe we'll make one more reef for the season, then we'll be done. And, uh, yeah, I, well, maybe tomorrow. And maybe for my back door, because I have nothing there if we don't sell it. So, as we spend time thinking of all the loved ones that we're making the grave blankets for holiday season, spend time with those that are still here. So important. So, thanks for watching. Send us some nice comments. And Merry Christmas. Hit like. Thanks, friends. Bye-bye.